And welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Lance Roberts. You're listening to Real Investment Hour right here on The Voice of Texas. I'm your host, Lance Roberts. Speaking of markets going down, you know, one of the things that we get a lot of phone calls on is about owning gold. Of course, you know, sure. there's you hear commercials all the time that, oh, you need to own gold. You need to have gold in, in a bunker along right. with your beanie weenies and your <laughs> ammo. And so, look, I'm not a big gold guy. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I, I, I look at, at uh, gold as a commodity. So... Right. To really kind of understand the whole thing better, I wanted to get an expert on it. Uh, sure. Kevin Demerit with Lear Capital. He's on the line with us right now. Kevin, welcome to the show. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me, Lance. Absolutely. You know, I, anytime I get on with you, I feel like I'm the novice in the room. So, <laughs> you know, always trying to struggle to add something. <laughs> well, I think I think you're being just fine here. And again, uh, you, you, you know, one of the things that I wanted to talk to you about is, that, look, I get phone calls every day. Um, I get emails every day, literally, about, um, you know, should I put gold in my IRA? Should I buy gold? Should I have gold bullion in my house? Should I have gold nuggets? Should I take the gold out of my teeth and store them somewhere? (laughs) Um, I want to bring this down to a kind of a a basic understanding level of what kind of gold. Let's start with, if I want to own gold, what is the best type of gold to own that is the least— I guess, um, affected by swings in commodity prices? Yeah, so there's two types of gold. There's uh, bullion coins, which go up and down exactly with uh, the spot price of gold or the spot price of silver. Mm -hmm. And then you can go into more rarer type uh, coins that do not have those kinds of fluctuations because it's more on the rarity. And then there's this, what we call semi-numismatic, where you can live in between a little bit where it may have a limited mintage, not the ups and downs that you see on a daily basis on the bullion side, um, because uh, of some rarity, but not you're not paying an arm and a leg for some rare coin. There's only ten in the world, or a thousand right. in the world, or something like that. Well, so I guess that's the question: is like if, if I'm, I'm, I'm I want to buy gold as a hedge against you know inflationary pressures potentially, or against a market route, etc. So. Would would the best what is what is the best type out of the three different types you just described as as an investor? If I'm going to invest, you know, my hard earned capital into gold, in your opinion, as the professional, um, if it was your money, what would you focus on first? You know, great question. And again, we just learn a little bit more about the customer. So if you're young and you have a long time, you know, to for for uh, retirement or whatever your financial goals are. You know, the older issues are fantastic. They've they performed uh, incredibly over 10, 20, 30-year periods. Mm-hmm. So you get kind of this double play. You know, the precious metals market goes up, and then the premiums go up because more and more people want those types of coins. If you're talking about a shorter time period, um, you know, the bullion is usually much better. So if you're trying to hedge a year out or a year and a half out or something like that, think the market's going to fall, then the bullion or the semi-numismatic where you're very close to the spot price of silver or gold is usually a better play. Gotcha. And, and, and of course, uh, I guess if you're buying the, the bullion and uh, the semi-numismatic, that's a mouthful, uh, <laughs> um, that – you know, you've really got to kind of understand, you know, what you're buying there because you're going to pay a premium value on the rarer coins, right? Yes, you will. Yeah, and we disclose all of that. So whatever whatever you've purchased, you know, you're going to know through our transaction agreement. We record everything so that you know exactly what your fees are um, from the beginning and the pros and cons of what you're looking for, you know, just a little bit of help on the time period you're looking for, what your goals are, can help us out, make some recommendations, and then you, most people sit down and come to their own conclusions, quite frankly, once you put it in front of them. Right. Well, do, do, you, do you, you know, and here's the, here's the, I guess, the, the problem or the paradox that we're trying to solve. You know, I think a lot of people go into buying gold, and they do it thinking they're going to own it long term. And it turns out that as soon as gold starts to fluctuate in price, which, you know, even as of uh, over the last, you know, couple of years, the price has moved all over the place, then they wind up doing exactly what they do with their stock investments, which is to panic sell the investment at the wrong time and lose money. Then they're convinced that gold wasn't the right thing for them. So they never own it again. How do you match? This is what I, I, I call duration matching in a portfolio. And it's what you're talking about as well is trying to match the psychology of the investor to the type of gold they're going to own. People may say they want to own it long term, but their psychology is very short term in nature in, in many cases. That's- 
That's right. And I, I can give you a perfect example. Back in 2002, I, you know, we made a projection, usually we do, a 10 years out on what the metal, what we think the metal would rise to. We thought it would be at $30 an ounce. And I have to tell you, people thought we were just absolutely nuts going from 40 to 30 it seemed, you know, right. miles and miles away. Two years later, silver was $6.50 an ounce. People still thought we were nuts, but they were up 60%, so it was okay to be a little bit nuts. 2005, it doubled. 2007, we all know what happened, and silver actually goes to $48 an ounce, 11 times higher than where we started at in 2002, $18 higher than our projection. The reason I bring this up is even today, from 2002, most people are shocked to find out that the silver market has still outperformed the gold, or uh, the silver market has still outperformed the stock market right. through that time period. So if we can, and that's the bullion part of the market. So right. if you move up a little bit to you know the semi-numismatic or numismatic, those have outperformed the market, you've gotten a better return. So, uh, yes, people call and sell. We get that a lot. But a lot of customers, when you sit down and say, look, the stock market is doing fantastic. That's what everybody's talking about. Well, look what we've done over these five-year five periods, seven-year periods, three-year periods. Usually they'll stay in the market. Right. Um, but you might have to readjust the portfolio also. I mean, well, you know, when silver goes from 4 to 38, don't keep all your money in silver. It's time to readjust <laughs> and maybe go back to the stock market. So yeah. there's a lot of that going on also. Well, right. And so and so let's let's and let's when you're talking about adding precious metals to a portfolio, right? So um, most individuals that, you know, are, are looking at adding gold or portfolio, they have a 401k plan, so they or they have an investment account and they're wanting to add some precious metals to their portfolio for hedging risk, etc. Um, should they consider various types may, uh, instead of buying just, you know, the the semi numismatic or just um, the the commodity itself, the core bullion, should you have a, a blend of all three types? Yeah, the government on those retirement accounts restricts. Um, so the, the older issue, 100-year-old coins, those are not available to go into a retirement account. But the semi-numismatic and the bullion coins are, and yes, we always combine the two. We try to combine those two in a portfolio. Mm -hmm. um, if it's, in a, it's a little if, bit if, more if, long term, right? But this is in a retirement account. If I have money in an investment account, I can buy any of the three, right? Correct. Okay. Now, what's what's the? Is there a, a big problem with trying to um, put gold or precious metals into an IRA? Is this a huge hurdle that people have to get across and open up new accounts, or is there a fairly simplistic way to do that? It's it's very simple. Um, you know, I think it's kind of one of the best kept secrets out there, um, placing physical gold into an IRA. But yeah, it's very easy to roll over a, a portion of your IRA. So if you had fifty, a hundred thousand dollars in an IRA and you only wanted to move a portion of it to a precious metals IRA, very easily done. Lear does all the work, no rollover penalties, and you know, you can just move it right over and then select the metals. And when you want to sell, it's just simply pick up the phone, just like you would with a stock or anything else, and um, you know, sell it at the day's price. So, so let's talk uh, very quickly here. Um, we're getting close to the end of our segment. Um, you know what? So let's talk about your prediction. You you mentioned your prediction. What are we predicting for gold and silver now for the next few years? I uh, you know I love the silver market right now. Um, there's a unique thing happening with silver that's happened over and over which is when the ratio gets to 80 to 1, the silver market, uh, you know, silver to gold, 80 to 1, it, it, it has never failed in the past 40 years to produce some fairly uh, sizable profits, which we have in our information that I can send out. So I really love the silver market today, feeling that it's undervalued. And again, I'll make a nutty prediction, and I, I predict that the gold mar or silver market would, is going to trade somewhere in the 80 to $100 range in the next 10 years. Wow. That's a, that's for quite a return. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. Well, so if somebody wants to get information or whatever, how's the easiest way to contact you? Well, we have our gold and silver introductory kit that has all the metals options in it, including the IRA and 401ks that you were bringing up. Mm -hmm. um, we can send that out. Uh, matter of fact, for your show, I wanted to include something special. So we have a $75 certificate good for all the IRA setup fees, which is a fee just to set it up. Or people can use it if they want metals outside of an IRA. We'll just send it along. All they have to do is mention the Lance Roberts show, 
and they can call us at 1-800-613-3557. 1-800-613-3557. Well, I'll tell you what we'll do, too, Kevin. If you'll email me that information, I'll put that in my weekend newsletter, and that way when it goes out, then people actually have the number and, and how to contact you. You bet. Appreciate it. Perfect. Absolutely. Kevin DeMerit, he's with Lear Capital. Um, LearCapital.com, of course, also just go by their website and uh, contact them. But Kevin, very knowledgeable on this, much more than I am. And so, again, I, I figured the best thing to do is when you want to talk about gold and silver and how to buy it and where to store it and what to do with it, get somebody who knows what they're doing. Exactly. Because <laughs> you know, I'm a stock and bond guy. Yeah.